Here it goes. Jan, it works, it works, it works. Let's see them call me a fool now. I knew I was right. The circuit variators are reducing the temperature. One by more than a third. Uh, I knew it would work. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, call for a celebration. Of course. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, champagne. Champagne. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go to your place and drink. I've got to get out of here. People like that out of the room. Felix, what? Wait a minute. There's someone coming. security for an important scientific conference. Important? It's a forum on fusion energy. It just so happens that there's a foreign scientist attending. We've been asked to look out for him. Is he lost? Know the rules. Maybe he's Russian. Maybe he'll defect. Angus McFadden of Glasgow. That's foreign? We were asked to help out. Now get on with it. I realize things are a bit slow, Melville, but there's no need for this type of make-work project. Following departmental directives is not making work, Adderley. It is doing our job. And what do I do? Make sure nobody peeks under his kilt? Adderley, please. Oh, well, seriously, Melville, the worst thing that could happen in one of these things is somebody squeaks the chalk. Oh, I hate that. Squeaking chalk. It's your assignment. Now get on with it. You think the Scotsman will make a break for it, Mona? Oh, you never can tell. Ah, you wouldn't turn away a poor wee refugee, would you? I can't go back to Scotland and face another haggis. If you two are through, you might try working, just for a change of pace. Fusion power is that magical source of the sun's energy, an inexhaustible, safe energy, without the radioactive risks of atomic power. Dr. McFadden, a question? Dr. Lieberman. Your theory of fusion depends on immense heat uh, to fuse the atoms together. I have been working in the other direction. Oh, oh, here goes Looney Lieberman again. <laughs> My experiments suggest that we may be able to fuse the atoms by freezing them together. But we've tested your theories, and all I can say is... <laughs> your theories just don't stand up in the cold light of day. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this would be a good time for us to take our coffee break. Jan, <laughs> yeah, coffee. Black, two sugars. Yeah. Of course, black two sugars. By now I know how you take your coffee. <laughs> Excuse me a moment, Jan. Something. Yes, sir. Right back. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Felix Lieberman. D.H. Adderley. I have been watching you, Mr. Adderley. And uh, I know you are not a scientist. 
Oh, what gave me away? Well, for openers, you were not laughing at me. I'm government security for your guest of honor. Oh, I see. Uh, I, I, I don't know about such things, but uh, is it possible to hire you? Hire me for what? Protection. Uh, someone is trying to kill me, Mr. Adderley. Uh, could we all reconvene, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Dr. Matheson would like to share his theory on particle acceleration with us. Perhaps we can talk later. It was a station wagon. Uh, brown, I think. I don't know models. Did you get a good look at the driver? No. What did the police say? There was a bottle of champagne in the car. It, it smashed. I tried to explain, but... Uh... <sighs> Will you help me, Mr. Adderley? Do you have any idea why someone might want to kill you? I, I have made a scientific discovery so important. There are many people who would do anything to acquire it. I have unlocked the secrets of the sun. Meaning? Meaning that every form of energy now known to man, fossil fuel, solar power, atomic power, are all obsolete. And you think there are people that don't share that desire? There are those who don't want to see fusion power developed. There are others who would use it for their own selfish ends. Well, I'll check with my superiors, see what we can do. If you need me, call me at this number. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I will. Uh, my secret is safe with you. Absolutely. Nobody ever listens to me. Security. Which departments? Building security. Someone parked in my parking spot again. Mr. Greenspan. I can't understand why we can't park indoors like everybody else. Looking for Mr. Adderley. Oh, he just stepped out for a moment, but you won't be long. Um, you want me to take your coat? No, thank you. I couldn't help but over here. <laughs> I wonder if I could be of help. I'm Adderley's superior. Well, I really should wait for Mr. Adderley, but uh, that's very kind of you. Not at all. Not at all. If there's anything, I'll be in my office. I Right here. Door's always open. Just feel free to knock. Okay. You don't have to knock because the door is open. <laughs> is this temporary? I beg your pardon? This location. Oh, no, I'm afraid not. No, this is the official headquarters of miscellaneous affairs. Just what exactly does your organization do? Well, it's sort of hard to explain, you know. We sort of... We do all the things that nobody else wants to do. Uh, someone to see you. Mr. Adderley, I'm Veronica Lieberman. I believe you know my father. Oh, yeah, I met him last night for the first time. How is he? Um, I have to speak to you, privately. In my office. Uh, Mona. Hold your calls. Right. Boy, if she can type, I'm in trouble. I hope I'm not bothering you. Huh. No problem, Mr. Lieberman. You can call me Veronica. Okay. Adderley. Well? I found your card on my father's desk. I hope that you'll keep what I have to say to you in confidence. <laughs> I do a lot of that. I shouldn't even be here. I think my father's in trouble. Why? What happened? I arrived late last night. I flew in from Paris. When I got to my father's house, no one was there. Was he expecting you? Yes. But he wasn't at the airport and he wasn't at home. All sorts of things went through my mind, like he'd been in an accident or he was at the hospital. And then things got worse than I thought. I 
I just didn't know who else to turn to. Major? I'm on my lunch hour, Adderley. My secretary should have told you. Huh? She did, but I have to talk to you. I'm busy. It's important. Did Greenspan give us permission for this? No, he said he didn't want any part of this. But I think it's important. I've had a request from a civilian source. You know we don't get involved in police matters. <laughs> Greenspan's invitation was pretty good. Sorry, Major. Adderley, I realize things at miscellaneous affairs have been slow lately, but that's no excuse. It's a missing person. He disappeared last night. Missing is hasn't been seen for days. Not disappeared last night. Check me. Major, I think this is really important. It had better be. In simple terms, what's the nature of this discovery? He told me he's found a way to produce fusion power. How soon? What time is it now? You mean he claims he's ready to go now? That's the idea. You too. Are you aware of the importance of a discovery like that? Yeah. And according to him, a lot of people would give anything to get it. And you think someone's trying to kill him? No. Kidnap him. But I'm not sure who's behind it yet. Could be the Soviets. The way their nuclear program's going, they need all the help they can get. I'll put the word out. The Russians have got him. There's bound to be a leak. All right. You have my going. Thanks, Major. But only until we get something solid and it's international affairs operation. Oh, come on, Major. Give me a break. I'm the one she came to. This is my baby. As long as he's found in some motel room with his lab assistant. A kidnapped scientist is not a matter for miscellaneous affairs. Well, at least give me a fighting chance. Mona's going to want all the information she can get on Lieberman. It would help if she had access to Central. You're actually asking me for access. You mean Mona isn't going to feed somebody's guppies? How badly do we want him back? All right. But only because of the urgency. And only for this one assignment. Soon the cleaning staff will be asking for top-level clearance. Adderley, one more thing. Make sure that Mona copies me and all the information you get. Don't I always? No. Touched anything or put anything away? I don't think so. Uh, just your card and the note. What's missing? A diploma? Picture? I don't know. I don't live here, remember? Right. How long has it been since you've been here? Oh, a long time. Ten years, anyway. My father came to visit me in Paris between. I don't think I'm going to be much help to you, Adderley. I don't know a lot about my father's life. Are there any other relatives? Somebody living here? No, just me. Mother died a long time ago. Excuse me. Whoever went through the place knew exactly what he wanted. Only the fusion file is missing. He knew exactly where to look. What does that mean? Maybe your father did the looking for them. Why? Maybe they forced him, but there's no sign of a struggle. Or maybe he was trying to get the information and get away before they got to him. What is it? An article on laser fusion. Looks like your father clipped something from it. Is it important? We'll see. Hello? Yes. Just a moment. It's your secretary. I think they found his car. We were on the check on the plates to see if it was somebody in the building or just a visitor. And Mona called to ask me to uh, check about the plates herself. Anyway, uh, she asked me to hold on to this for you. Any idea what time it came in? No, I was here when I got here this morning. Not when you left last night? No, I worked late last night. 
Past eight. Boy, was Mr. Greenspan mad when he saw this here. Mr. Greenspan needs to be jump-started in the morning, Billy. This saves me the trouble of doing it. But why would they leave it here? The kidnappers wouldn't leave it at a security agency. Unless they wanted us to know they had him. But the note said that... Not to go to the police. Your father drove this here himself. How do you know that? Seat in the rearview mirror. A position for someone your father's size. He must have been trying to get to me. Bring me the information. But he didn't make it. Leave it clearance. Oh, <laughs> thank you. No more begging for information. No more favors. No more groveling. Calm down, Mona. Remember, it's just for this assignment. Okay, I know, I know, I know. But this is like, you got to admit, this is like a foot in the door. And I'm going to find out everything there is to know about Lieberman. Except, of course, where he is. There was a friend at the science conference last night, a blind man. Okay, um, do you know his name? No, but he was very distinctive. Small, about 60, an accent, Eastern Europe, I think. And he had a pin in his lapel. It looked like this. It looked like an award from a science conference or something. Oh. Huh. Anything else? Yeah. See if you can get a copy of this. I want to know what was clipped from it. And see if he's had any of his uh, theories published anywhere. Roger. And make sure you keep Clack up to date on what we're doing. Oh, yeah. If we can pull this off, we might both get out of the basement. <laughs> as long as you're dreaming, Mona, think Paris. What about Mr. Greenspan? The world would be a better place if he stayed here. <laughs> Surely you two can be doing more to look busy than standing around chatting? We're watching our language. Has that car been moved from my parking spot? I had him towed off to the impound yard. Good. Shit. Sure. So that'll teach him. <laughs> Whose was it, anyway? Uh, General something or other. I can't remember his name. He's a buddy of Clack's. Always hanging around. What? Well, he'll use the visitor's parking next time. Want to get Clack on the phone, please? <laughs> if you want me, I'll be in federal research. Yes, Peter Barton. I'm chief of the Fusion Research Unit. What can I do for you? Have you had any contact with a Dr. Lieberman? Felix. Came in to see us a few days ago. Come on in. Thanks. Something wrong? Oh, no, just routine. He worked for you? But you work in the same field. Well, let's say we're in the same ballpark. Felix keeps batting around all the old ideas we've uh, tossed aside. And what exactly do you do? Well, what we're trying to do is basically very simple. Take four hydrogen atoms, fuse them together to make a helium atom. You do that, you've got it. Fusion power. It's that simple? It is. The temperature happens to be 10 million degrees. <laughs> How do you manage that? We don't. That's the problem. What do you think of Dr. Lieberman's discovery? No opinion. I don't know what it is. You don't? But I thought... I that... passed Felix on to one of my assistants, Mr. Adderley. How well do you know Lieberman? Not very well. Well, I don't like to talk about a couple week. But I should tell you, the man has a terrible reputation in scientific circles. I see. Oh, don't get me wrong. Not all of his ideas are bad. But lately... Well, I'll take you to see my assistant. What in hell is it supposed to do? Well, the way he explained it to me, it's the reverse of standard fusion research. And what's that? Freezing together. He said that before the sun came along, there was only very intense cold, and that this would create it. Is that possible? My wife, Barbara, and I did some experiments along similar lines back in graduate school. They didn't lead anywhere. I told him he was wasting his time. How do you react to that? At first, he accused me of lying. Then he said I didn't have the vision to see what he'd done. 
He had these delusions that that was going to change the world. Sounds like Lieberman. He's big on changing the world. Is it possible you've overlooked something? Could Lieberman be right? I feel as new as this, Mr. Adderley, anyone could be right. But given Felix Lieberman's reputation in scientific circles, there's two schools of opinion. The first says that he's a charlatan. The other thinks he's crazy. And what's your opinion? I suppose there's truth to both, but to be quite honest, I think he's a crazy charlatan. <laughs> Take up jogging? No, I had to speak to you before Mr. Greenspan came in. Um, Lieberman Files, I sent them up to Major Clark's office last night. About an hour later, he called down, wanted to speak to you. You weren't there, so he yelled at Mr. Greenspan instead. Good for him. Yeah, Mr. Greenspan then said the moment you arrived, I had to make sure you were waiting in his office this morning. On penalty of death? Yeah, mine. Don't worry, Mona. I'll be a good boy. Do you know what was in those files? No, but I got the picture. Looney Lieberman, eccentric, outrageous. Well, so was Edison and Vermeer. And a lot of people had turned out to be lunatics. But if his theory is worthless, why kidnap him? Oh, boy, if Major Clack has read those files... If he's yelling at Melville, we can assume he has. He is going to do a lot more than yell at you. Don't worry, Mona. He can't assign me to miscellaneous affairs twice. What'd you get on the blind man, Mona? <laughs> well, okay, now that pin and his lapel, those are these. That pin, that is, an, that is an award given each year for the best published article in the field of particle physics. <laughs> now, um, the winners at that conference were, mm -hmm. oh, our Scotsman, Angus McFadden. Wrong accent. Um, Glenda Robertson. Wrong sex. And J J Jan Varga. That sounds interesting. Okay, I um, cross-referenced the guest list with who's who in science. It's just, it's so great what you can do with a clearance card. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, Mona. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, Varga Jan, 62 years old, originally from Hungary, came here after the 56th revolution. He worked for federal research for quite a few years. That's interesting. Yeah. He retired three years ago when he lost his sight in a laboratory accident. That's our man. You got an address? Yep, 10 Pemberton. Good girl, Mona. What'd you get on that magazine? Oh, well, sir, now that is really bizarre because... Morning, Mona. I want to talk to you, Adderley. How about this little investigation of yours? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't I a part of it? Well, I ruled you out right off the top, Melville. There's a mastermind involved. You see this? That's exactly the same size as the one that was taken from Lieberman's lab. Oh, that really narrows the field, doesn't it? Black called last night. Either Lieberman or the kidnappers took it. Either way, it's very important to one of them. We find that or what's in it. We've solved the case. You know, I think you're cracking up, Adderley. I'll need to talk to Clack. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. The kidnapping of Professor Felix Lieberman. The focus of our joint efforts for two days. Who is this scientific genius whose brilliant ideas many would do anything to obtain? Major, if I can explain. Let's review some of the man's past glory, shall we? Nine years ago, Lieberman proposes building giant dams to harness the power of the tides along the Atlantic coast. Environmentalists are quick to point out that this would alter the Gulf Stream and bring a new ice age to Europe. Major. I haven't finished. I haven't started. In scientific circles, our boy is known as Looney Lunar Lieberman. Major, I'm aware of... It gets better. Four years ago, Lieberman claims to have proven that teleportation is possible. And the standard joke among scientists that year was, beam me up, Felix. Oh, you've read the file. That comes as a surprise. I thought you were operating on sheer imagination. Give me 24 hours. That's what, a head start? Just out of curiosity, what was Lieberman's scheme for tapping the energy of the sun? A giant magnifying glass? <laughs> <laughs> At least someone finds this amusing. I'm sorry. 
Major, I'm very close. There's just a couple of things I need to tie up. Please, 24 hours. I'll make you an offer, Adderley. All right. You may not think so. I'll give you 24 hours. But if this mess you've got us into isn't cleared up by then, you're never to approach me again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Greenspan will have the final word on everything. That's as it should be. That's the deal I'm offering, Adderley. What do you say? It's all right, Adderley. You've been out of the field a long time. Nerve is the first thing to go. Agreed. Dismissed. Yes. Can I help you? Dr. Varga, my name is Adderley. I'm with Miscellaneous Affairs, which is part of International Security and Intelligence. Oh, well, yes, uh, I know. ISI. What is this about? I'd like to talk to you about Felix Lieberman. Lieberman? I don't know any Lieberman. He bought your coffee at the conference. I was there. Then you must thank him for me. You must understand, I don't always know who gives me coffee. Somebody just died. My clearance just did. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Inserted my card in the computer and it just kept flashing, no longer valid. Security was there in seconds. It was so humiliating. They made me destroy my card right then and there, said it was company rules. I'm sorry, Mona. Clack just made things tough for me, too. Yeah. How'd it go with Varga? He claims he's never even heard of Lieberman. What? But you saw them together. Why would he lie to you? I think maybe he's scared. Oh, you think maybe he knows the details of the theory? Right. Did you find out what Lieberman had cut from that magazine? Yeah, yeah, that stuff's all done in the office. But really, I just feel like going home. Come on, Mona. Adventure calls. So this makes about as much sense as the rest of it. What's cut out are ads and things from computers and... What are you looking for? Anything look familiar, Mona? The, the, this note is cut from this magazine. That's right. You know what that means. Someone is trying to tell us something. That's right. Lieberman. No kidnapper is going to sit around his victim's house and cut and paste his message. Lieberman did this himself. But why? Oh, to make his theory seem more valuable than it really was? If they'd wanted publicity, the note wouldn't have said to hide his disappearance. As a cover. As, as, as a cover so he could defect to the Russians without us knowing. No, they wouldn't take him. He'd set them back another 20 years. Hey, was that car put in Greenspan's spot as another clue? <laughs> what is the clue? Where is he? I guess I'll have to talk to Varga again. You think he knows? Well, he knows what Lieberman discovered. He also knows why it's the only worthwhile idea Lieberman's ever had. Miscellaneous Affairs. Oh, yes, just a moment, please. Adderley. It's Veronica Lieberman. Hello. Yes, Adderley. I know you said you'd call if you had something, but um, I was just a little bit concerned about... Uh... Concerned about your father, I understand. But put your mind at ease. No one's holding him. He's in hiding. In hiding? Where? I don't know yet. Veronica, has your father ever mentioned a man named Jan Varga? Um... Yes, he works with my father sometimes. That's right. I'm going to talk to him right now, but I think he'd feel a little better about talking to me if you were there. I'm on my way. Do you know his address? Uh, yes, of course. Should I pick you up? Pas quoi. What? Never mind. I'll take my own car and see you there. Something wrong? I don't know. She comes back from Paris, not speaking French, but she remembers the address of one of her father's friends. 
I thought she had been in Paris for 10 years. Right. Mona, I want you to run Barton and Irwin through ICON. Okay. Anything in particular? Domestic life. Wives, secretaries, girlfriends, ex-wives, whatever. I want to know if one of them is tall and blonde. I don't know anything. Believe me, I know nothing. Dr. Varga, it's me, Adderley. Are you all right? Adderley. I spotted you from the front porch. Is somebody following you? Mr. Adderley, we should have the talk. What a good idea. Come on. You sure someone was following you? Not just walking in the park? No. No, sir, but two people. I am not expecting anyone. I am. Veronica Lieberman. Felix's daughter is here from Paris. I got here as soon as I could. Veronica. Hello, Dr. Varga. Dr. Varga. Whatever happened to Uncle Jan? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Jan. It's just, uh, my father. Have you any idea what happened to him? You are not to worry, my dear. Your father is safe. He told you? We were just getting to that. Please, let us have our tea. And then he met you at the conference, Mr. Adderley. You were the answer to his worries. Why didn't he call me? There was no time. He wanted you to find who was after him. And on his way back from the conference, the same car followed him. He was frightened. He called me and we packed his research papers. And afterwards, he made up the note in case they broke into the lab. He thought it would throw them off. Well, long enough for someone to get the note to me. Why didn't you tell me where he was? He thought they would start following you. He thought that was the way you would catch them. Doctor, if he's in trouble, I can't help unless I know where he is. Please, Uncle Jan. I gave my word. I would tell no one. Please, we need your help. All right. I have a cabin in the mountains. It is not too far. It is easy to find. I have a map in my desk. Please excuse me. You know, I'd forgotten how much I like Uncle Jan. Huh. He seems to like you, too. Mm -hmm. He told me about the pony he bought you as a child. Pony? Mm. Oh, yeah. Huh. He couldn't remember what you called it. Oh, it was so long ago. <laughs> I had someone make this up when I lost my sight. It is easier than giving directions. Got it. Are you sure he will be protected? Perhaps I should come along. No. You wait here. We'll call you when we get Felix to safety. Shall we? Um, Uncle Jan, I wonder if I might use your bathroom. Oh, yes, of, yes, of course, my dear. It is uh, 
up the stairs. Thank you. I'll just be a minute. You are looking at my pictures. How did you know? If I listen carefully, I know where someone is in the room. You must find it strange, Mr. Adderley, that a blind man keeps photographs. No. You remember them. Please, tell me, is it difficult being a security agent with one hand? How did you know that? <laughs> From the way you took your teacup. Most people would handle a hot teacup with two hands. You're very perceptive, Doctor. You must have been a great help to Dr. Lieberman. I did what I could. What do you think of his theory? It was very innovative. I am sorry it never got to Barton. But that fool, Irwin, kept making fun of Felix as if he had ever had any real ideas of his own in his whole life. Doctor, there was a picture above Lieberman's desk. Do you happen to remember it? He had many pictures over his desk. But if he had to take one, which one would it be? The one of Felix and Veronica. He loves that picture. It was her graduation. He gave me a copy of it. It's uh, there at the end, uh, near the door. It's odd that Felix didn't tell you she was coming. Hmm. Just one more question, Dr. Barker. Tell me you didn't give Veronica a pony as a child. A pony? I didn't give anyone a pony. Is there another telephone in the house? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, upstairs in the study. Jack, Lieberman faked his kidnapping. He's staying at Barker's cabin. Then we were right all along. He hasn't shown this to anybody else. Have you pieced together the missing permutations? No. Felix has left gaps in all the right places. Nobody can figure out this data without that model of his. OK. Here's how you get to Vargas' place. Take the main room. Mr. Adderley. Mr. Adderley. What is it? That woman isn't Veronica Lieberman. No. About five miles. Left, 500 yards or so. Is everything all right? Great. You all set? Almost. There's been something I've been meaning to tell you. Thank you for finding him, Adderley. I can't tell you how much it means to me. How bad? here as soon as you can. Mona, that study door won't hold forever. I am surprised, VH, but, you know, I'm kind of glad. I mean, there was just... I don't know, there was something about that woman I just did not like. For example, her concern when her father first disappeared? You noticed. Ah, uh, well, I'm charming, Mona, but I'm not that charming. <laughs> um, okay, now, do you want me to give Clark directions to the cabin? No, it's too late. Her partner's already on his way. VH, you don't know who it is. You don't know if there's anyone with them. That's okay, Mona. I've got backup. And together we've got three hands and two eyes. Yeah. 
Can you see anything? We're not the first. Huh. And Felix? I can't tell from here. What do we do now? Well, one of us creates a diversion, the other takes a look around. I nominate you to do the looking. All right. You drive the car. What? Give me ten minutes, then goose it up the driveway. But, Mr. Adderley, I will wreck your car. Promise? Ten minutes. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> of course it works. If you'd shown Barton the proper data, he could have tested it for himself. Oh, I'll show it to him. As soon as you permanently disappeared. With your name on the notes. Names. I'll have to give Barbara credit. After all, I would have never found you without her. Oh, you and your wife have never published so much as an idea. No one will believe a discovery of this magnitude as your own. They'll be so busy handing out research monies, nobody will bother to check up on you. You're going to make us very wealthy, Felix. This discovery is for everyone. Oh, I'm going to give it to everyone who's willing to pay. Now, fire it up again. I want to make sure of the sequence. the prisoners or would you like to drive? <laughs> Barton at Federal Research tells me that Lieberman's ideas on fusion energy are actually promising. They might even have some practical application. How soon? In about 25 years. Should I feel free to approach you then, sir, if things work out? I dislike sarcasm even more than insubordination, Adderley. Sorry, Major. 
That be all then? One more thing. I feel I was a little hasty in my judgment. And you can continue to come and see me should the need arise. Thanks, Major. Well, don't mistake that for an apology, Adam. Of course not. Dismissed. <laughs> You're not sad I cleared this up, are you, Melvin? I came within a few hours of keeping you in your place, running miscellaneous affairs the way it should be. Think how dull it would be if we didn't have our little differences.